Hello and welcome to Shorts in Psychology. In this video, we will clarify the purpose of drafting and dispel some common student misconceptions about this process. We'll also discuss how to take draft feedback constructively. So what exactly is the purpose of drafting? Contrary to what students often expect, it is not to write your assignment for you. Rather, it is to provide feedback on your current progress according to the assessment criteria. This includes checking that all aspects of the task have been covered. Again, I won't be telling you exactly what to write, but will rather point out aspects that are missing. You will also receive feedback on the depth of your content. Are you covering it at a surface or deep transfer level? Have points been illustrated with specific examples or is the content more general in nature? Do you have a series of different arguments or does the work contain repetition? How your assignment is written will also be drafted. This includes your clarity and expression, use of scientific terms and structure of sentences and paragraphs. Is it easy to understand or does it have to be reread a number of times to decipher what is being said? Again, if the draft is poorly written and difficult to follow, it will not be rewritten for you as it needs to be your own original work. Rather, I will simply highlight which sections need clarification or rewriting. Now that we've clarified exactly what the purpose of drafting is, let's dispel some common student misconceptions. Often, students approach a draft with the mentality that as it is just a draft, it is less important due to not being graded. Therefore, students often don't invest an adequate amount of time and effort into their draft or even submit one that is incomplete. Teachers can only provide feedback on what is there. Therefore, if it is poorly edited or incomplete, this significantly limits the amount of feedback that you will receive, reducing the effectiveness of drafting. As a result, this will impact the grade you will receive for your final copy. Students also often make comments like, Teachers say my draft is good, but I didn't get an A plus for my final copy. If something was missing, they should have told me what else to write. The assignment has to be your work. If teachers tell you exactly what to say, it's their work and ideas, not yours. Therefore, the feedback you receive on your draft will relate to what work is there. Of course, if aspects of the task are missing or assessment criteria haven't been covered, your teacher will point this out but they're not going to say what you should discuss for those sections. Lastly, often students think that receiving a draft back covered with comments means that their draft isn't of a good standard. As your teacher, it's my job to help you achieve your full potential, no matter what your starting point. Drafting is to support you on your journey of continual improvement. Therefore, all drafts will be returned with lots of feedback, whether they are already at an A, B, C or lower standard. Receiving little to no feedback makes the drafting process a useless exercise. So when you are receiving teacher feedback, try and adopt a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. Having a fixed mindset is holding the belief that intelligence is static and therefore an individual with a fixed mindset believes that their abilities are unchanging. They are either good at something or they're not. This leads to that individual seeing effort as fruitless or worse and giving up easily when faced with obstacles. Feedback is taken as personal criticism and the success of others is seen as a threat. Having a growth mindset on the other hand means believing that intelligence can be developed. This leads to a desire to learn as it is effort and attitude that determine one's abilities. As a result, the individual will persist in the face of setbacks and views effort as the path to mastery. Feedback is taken constructively and the individual will find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. As Abraham Maslow said, in any given moment we have two options, to step forward into growth or step back into safety. Therefore, when receiving draft feedback, try and replace, I can either do it or I can't, with, I can learn to do anything I want. Instead of, I hate challenges, try, challenges help me to grow. While a challenging assignment might be daunting, rather than thinking, I don't like doing what I don't know, practice telling yourself that you like learning about things you don't know. And instead of giving up when it gets too hard, keep trying until you get the results you want. When writing, finding your flow can be the hardest. So here are some tips to get you started. Firstly, 
Once you've done your research or completed the investigation, write something down. It is always easier to edit something rather than being paralysed staring at a blank screen because you are trying to write it perfectly straight away. Start by just recording your ideas. What do you want to say? What data did you collect? What do you think it means? Using paragraph headings, topic sentences and key dot points will help you to organise your ideas. Once you have written down all of your ideas into proper sentences and paragraphs, what next? To check your content, depth and use of scientific terms, look back over previous similar assessments. Read over the feedback you received to avoid repeating past mistakes. For example, perhaps you didn't suggest enough improvements in your first investigation report. Being aware of this ensures the same thing won't happen again. Another suggestion is to read aloud when proofreading. It is much easier to detect whether sentences are too long or your expression is poor out loud. If you have a friend or family member willing to listen, read it to them. They don't need to understand the topic in order to identify poor grammar or expression. When you are making big changes to your draft, save multiple versions as separate files. You may decide later on that you wish to reinsert some deleted content, and this will save you from having to rewrite it. A good way to help you sequence your different versions is to include the date at the end of the file name so you know exactly which version is what. Lastly, try and avoid writing all of your draft at once. Instead, break it into chunks and reread it on multiple occasions. Approaching it with a fresh perspective can help you to identify areas that need work or think of new ideas, both saving you time overall and improving the quality of your work. Remember, Writing clearly and scientifically takes time and practice. Everyone has to learn how to do this and there are very few people out there, if any, that can write assignments perfectly the first time. So don't be too hard on yourself. Because of this, allow yourself plenty of time for rereading and editing your work. And to my own students, remember too that I'm always happy to provide additional feedback between the draft and final copy. So don't be afraid to ask especially if you're making a lot of changes. I hope that this video helps both with your approach to drafting and your mindset towards feedback. Thanks for listening. And if you have any suggestions or requests for the Mind Matters video series, please leave them in the comments below.